Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we're gonna dye some luxurious single ply super bulky yarn in an attempt to use up some of the colors that I have in stock solutions that I've been using over and over through the beginning of 2024. These are all colors that I love, but we're gonna see how much of a dent I can make in them today. Now, the yarn base I'm planning to dye is Knit Picks Ala Prima Super Bulky Weight Yarn. This yarn is 100% merino wool, and there are 52 yards per 120 gram skein. This yarn is perfect for a super chunky hat or cowl or something like that. I'll talk about the dye colors more shortly, but first I do want to pre-soak the yarn, so I'm gonna add on some removable nylon zip ties onto our skeins. Ugh, this is so fluffy. And I'm gonna loosen the tie a little bit because this tie is with the ends of the skein. There is currently only one tie on here. And if that tie is from where the ends are attached, you can loosen it a bit so that way you have the ability to get a little bit more dye in that area. And the zip tie just is gonna be an additional tie. It's also a great place to lift up the yarn during the dyeing process. Uh, so that way, if I were to lift the yarn here, I maybe wouldn't grab the whole section and I could easily tangle it. But when I lift from the zip tie, I know I am lifting all of the yarn at once. We're gonna start pre-soaking this yarn in some plain tap water with no additional acid. And we're probably gonna to wanna to pre-soak it for an hour or so. The longer you pre-soak, the more, the less likely you are to have dry patches, which will result in rogue white sections onto your finished project. Now, sometimes I get questions about differences when you're dyeing different yarn weights. Uh, so not necessarily about the fiber content, but what's the difference between dyeing this bulky weight yarn compared to a fingering weight non-superwash yarn? And sometimes there's not a lot of difference, but one difference can be based on the ply. And so since this is a single ply yarn, there is a little bit of resist. We have less surface area overall than if we had a yarn that had more plies to it, which sounds weird, but the, there's a center to this where the dye can't necessarily access as easily, which isn't a bad thing. It just might mean that colors will strike a little bit slower on here than they would with the same fiber base on a fingering weight yarn. But most of the yarn I dye in my videos is super wash. So the biggest difference we're gonna have today is the fact that this base is not super wash. I think more so than the fact that it's super bulky. But anyway, I'm gonna go let this pre-soak for at least an hour. It's actually the next day and I'm coming over with our yarn. We'll be spreading this out as much as we can. And we're gonna add a lot of water to this. I also just wanted to show you that there is like some cloudiness in our rinse. Um, I don't know if that's oils or dust or what, but when I see that, then I tend to use new water versus the pre-soak water for our dye bath. Just in case uh, we've got some proteins in there that uh, could also absorb dye. That's not what we want. Here's eight cups of water and 16 cups of water. This is gonna give our yarn of the ability to float in here and when I add colors, it's gonna allow those colors to spread more from where I've placed them. But as we start heating this up, I also wanna add some acid. One, two, three, four, five, six tablespoons of white vinegar. And I'm gonna heat this up and we'll come back once things are hot. We are nice and hot. I'm gonna reduce the heat to low and we're gonna start bringing over some colors. I'm bringing over concentrated color. This is about 30 milliliters of the Caribbean blue. And I'm pouring it on randomly-ish onto the two skeins. There will obviously be some differences and this color in theory, will spread out. It'll go beneath the surface and we will see it spread. Now we have a little bit of blue residue in here, which I'm gonna leave as I bring over 
the next color, which is about 50 milliliters of some electric violet. Now, the thing with older dye stocks is that sometimes uh, when time goes on, some of the color gets, oh, what's a good word for it? May crash out of solution. And so there was at least one time when I saw things get change, the color like change as we went towards the bottom of what we had mixed. The color got more concentrated. And so that's not a bad thing necessarily, but what it means is that even though one can assume that with 50 milliliters of electric violet, I'm adding 0.5 grams of dye because these are 1% stock solutions with one gram of dye per 100 milliliters of liquid. We don't know necessarily for sure, but by measuring the amount of dye before I pour it on, I know that I'm not gonna be adding too, too much. Okay, next up is royal purple which is a different purple from electric violet. They may look a little similar, but the royal purple uh, is deeper and overall less bright, but I will say actually right now it's hard to tell which one is which. You can see these colors spreading out some already though. The darkness that we had on top is getting lighter as these colors are sinking in. Okay, next up is midnight blue which is a bit of a purpley blue, but I'm just pouring this in areas that have a little bit more white, trying to go onto both skeins, <laughs> a little bit at least. Uh, where do I wanna go? Let's go in here. Now from here, all I want to do is get a spoon and move it. And you can see how we have some more pinks here uh, from that royal purple versus the electric violet, the way that those colors are settling. I think what's happening is a lot of the color is sinking through the fiber towards the bottom, but I am going to leave this and I am going to wait for 15 minutes and not touch anything. I am so curious to see how different this may be when we come back. Well, that's actually a fair amount of change. Now, I can tell that in the water, yeah, we have a fair amount of color. Okay, so see right there locally it's cleared, but right here we have more pigment. And so I'm tempted to continue to let things sit for a little bit longer before, okay, because like right there locally it's cleared. Oh, this is so pretty and we don't know what's happening beneath. I likely want to add more dye at some point. Let's come in with more acid. Two, three, four, five, six, because it won't hurt. And the one thing I do want to do is that there's some pinks here. Look at that pink color. I'm gonna move it around a little bit, just so it's a little bit more spread. And here's a bit, that might all rinse out, but you can see that we have a lot of that deeper pink. There's no harm in just moving it through. I feel like we might be a little overexposed. Oh, I'm so excited to move this. This is such a me colorway. You, it's amazing that these are leftover dye stocks. Okay. I am gonna wait another 15 minutes. We're just gonna be really patient here uh, before I go and move things because things may spread and blend more, but I also just want to give it a chance to set. Um, so I'll see you in 15 minutes. I'm having a little deja vu because there's a hat that I made for myself and the color palette is very similar. All right, I'm gonna lift up and flip our yarn. Okay, we've got some wider patches, but also you can see we have a lot of color that went down beneath the surface. Okay, I don't wanna move things too much. And this time I'm not planning on measuring. I'm just coming in with some little bits of electric violet on some of the lighter areas. Uh, I'm also gonna do a tiny bit 
of some royal purple because that's where some of those pinks, oh, that was a, more than a little bit. That's where some of those pinks are coming in. And I can pick this up and move the color over. I'm okay with there being some whites in here. I just wanted to disrupt some of the larger white patches. And I think from here, uh, with the exception of a tiny bit of color left in the little measuring cup, which I'll just bring in. But I think now all I have to do is keep this for 30 minutes. The 30 minutes are up. We'll see where we are. Oh, this is so pretty. Yeah, all of the color is in the yarn, except for maybe a tiny bit of some blue. But, oh, this is beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna carefully set it aside. And we're gonna let the yarn cool off completely before we go to wash it. Let's wash this bulky yarn. Woo! <laughs> As I drop it into the sink. This is a very, very Rebecca colorway. It's all these purples with hints of blue. Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh my gosh, it would look so good. I love those super, super chunky hats. There's so many amazing patterns. And one of the ones that I made, I wear all the time. And the thing that got me so excited about this yarn is that before this, Knit Picks didn't have a good, super bulky single ply yarn. They had some glorious, super bulky two ply yarns that I love, but the just merino, single ply super bulky was missing. And Nick is also, they had a single ply just wool yarn, but it wasn't as soft. And this, this Ala Prima is so, so soft. And even Wool to Die For didn't have one that fit what I was looking for and hoping to have to die. And so it's fun when there's something that you get that is kind of what you were looking for in the feel and the purpose. And yeah, I just have to be careful not to felt it. But the good news, the good news here is that we're not seeing any bleeding. There's no hint of blue or anything in our rinse. So I'm gonna go pop this through my spin dryer. We'll hang it up to dry and take a look at the finished yarn. <sighs> This yarn is so fluffy and bulky and glamorous, and it isn't felted, it comes apart super easily. You might be wondering about some of these bright pinks. Uh, I don't think that royal purple on its own breaks exactly, but I can say that an older stock solution of this color has a lot of pink residue at the bottom of the bottle. Those pinks sort of are less soluble, and so they settle. And so that's anyway where they came from. What kind of hat might you make with this yarn? There's enough variation in here that it may not work well with a complex stitch pattern, but there's tons of fun chunky hat patterns that you could do with this or something that has a more simple stitch or even ribbed pattern would be really lovely. And I'm pretty sure 120 grams of this yarn is absolutely enough for a hat. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. When I pick a yarn base to dye, there are often two or three different things in conflict with each other. There is the video creator who loves to play around with a variety of different yarn bases and take risks and have fun. There's the video creator who loves to take risks and have fun and play with a wide variety of yarn bases. But then there's also the business side where I sell my yarn on Etsy and therefore want to pick yarn bases to dye that I know people will want to purchase because then I can get more yarn for more videos and this cycle can continue. So I know that the super bulky yarn like this doesn't sell as well as, say, DK weight or fingering weight yarn. 
But I also know that as the knitter side of Chemnitz, I love working with this super bulky weight yarn. And so that's another factor that comes in. And I know that if I need to go shopping in my own shop, this is something that ultimately could end up uh, migrating over to my personal stash from the shop stash. Ultimately, I think it's the creative side that wins out because, you know, I, I have like probably 20 skeins of super bulky yarn that isn't dyed yet that's in my stash. And yeah, if, <laughs> if there are techniques you'd like to see with it, please let me know in the comments. Uh, and I'm not sharing any of this to complain. It's just sometimes it's nice to, I don't know, sometimes I enjoy sharing little behind the curtain glimpses of the competing things that go on in my brain. Yarn dyeing is art and I'm an artist and that is that art is ultimately the thing that drives me the furthest. Sometimes I do go and check my shop inventory and use that to pick what colors that I use in my videos. But then at the same time, I also try to make sure I have a variety of colors in my videos and don't always do purple. There's a lot of purple because I love purple. <laughs> I just have so much fun playing with color and yarn and Thank you so much for watching.